I'm overwhelmed. I'm intimidated. I'm anxious. What's Virgin doing? On this channel, you have seen me tackle quite a few of my dream dresses. We are doing yet another one. I am finally going to tackle Danielle's breathe dress from the movie Ever After. To quote R2D2. <laughs> no. How does R2D2 scream? That hurt my throat. Research. This video is called One Hour of Silence Occasionally Broken by R2D2 Screaming. <laughs> Nailed it. Without a doubt, going to be one of the most, if not the most detailed dress I've ever made. That is what is scaring me so much. I've been sewing for a while, but I'm also very much still a novice and not very good at a lot of things. The idea of trying to replicate this dress and all of its accoutrements makes me a little anxious. We are going to go through this journey together Noble quest. I am going to England in three weeks, less than three weeks. I'm hoping to film the reveal in England. I have been obsessed with this dress for a couple years now. Now it may strike you that I said a couple years versus some of my other dream dresses that I have been yearning over for at least a decade. Admittedly and shamefully, I was a late bloomer to the Ever After film. I did not watch it when I was little, so I think I watched it maybe three or four years ago. I just find myself really resonating with the character of Danielle. She's beauty, she's grace, she'll punch you in the face. <laughs> Our mission statement is complete. We are going to make this dress in a couple weeks. As usual with my projects, it comes time to figure out how the heck pattern pieces, materials, reference photos. So this project is going to be a lot and I am pooping myself. Sorry, that's gross. But nonetheless, if we take a look at the breathe dress. From what I understand, there is a base dress. And then on top of that, there are layers and layers of trim and embroidery, embellishment with an overskirt that also has a bunch of embroidery on it. Also, as far as the wings for this project, I have a very gracious friend from England who is making them for me, allowing me to focus on the dress, which is good because I am absolute trash at making fairy wings. All right, first thing I need to do, fabric shop. So much going on in this costume. In fact, what I should probably do is pull up a bunch of reference photos for it. Found this really, really helpful website, which is called everaftercostumes.com. Don't mind my computer sounding like it's about to spontaneously combust. They have a whole page dedicated to all of the costumes in Ever After. I can go to the breathe dress. All of this super, helpful information, a bunch of blurbs on it from the actual costume designer of the movie. Man, the internet. Because this costume intimidates me so, my instinct is to put it off. And then three years later, wonder why I never finished it. We're not gonna do that. I'm sitting down right now. I'm ordering the fabric. Hooey! Crinkled metallic organza. Okay, well, yeah. Crinkled metallic. <gasps> It worked. <laughs> I don't even know what to do. This one looks pretty similar. This also looks nice. Uh, 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 uh. Appliques. This is kind of fun. <laughs> I'm gonna have about 67 tabs open by the end of this. I love the internet. <laughs> no. All around me are familiar faces. And so she continued her noble quest, searching and searching, even finding this applique and letting out the most inhuman screech you've ever heard in your entire life. And with that, let's see what we got. For the overskirt, I got this sort of sheer fabric and then this pearl fabric that I thought maybe would help cheat the embroidery, even though it makes me look like Edward Cullen just ran a marathon. Got two types of trim for the waist, this lacy material for the bodice, this metallic -y silver rope for a lot of the dress, gold apple case for the sleeves, a bunch of other trim for the sleeves, including this pearl string. First thing I gotta do, arguably the worst part, cut all the pattern pieces out of these sheets. <sighs> the 
For this project, I'm using this Simplicity pattern, which came out years and years ago, and I'm not sure if you can get it now. My dear friend Kelsey sent it to me. Focusing on this gown right here. It's not an exact replica. There are quite a few things that are different, but I think it'll really help me start from nothing to make a dress that will at least serve as a base, and we can go from there. Let's do it. This satiny material. I got like an off-white. I don't think the color matters all too much. All you see of this fabric is the break in the overskirt on the front. Let's get the really annoying parts of this project out of the way. Okie dokie. These are all the pattern pieces I need for this specific gown. All the skirt pieces, the overskirt sleeve, which will be a different fabric. The bodice pieces, gauntlets for the sleeves. Like the actual dress of this is not, why are you sitting like that? All that complicated. I'm sure this is not super duper accurate. I'm gonna lay out that satiny fabric. Cut out all the pieces I need from that. Let's do it. tidings to you. I made a lot of progress yesterday. I didn't talk to the camera all too much because I was kind of in the zone. A lot of the base dress constructed, or at least the outer layers and the lining layers, the bottom gauntlet is a little bit longer than the one provided. On her wrist, it goes down a little bit. Redo this pattern piece. I went to do the sleeve pattern piece and I don't have enough of that crinkle organza or look at me pretending I know what fabrics are. I ordered some more on eBay that might be the same, if not very, very similar. The overlayer of this and then start figuring out where those little pearl details need to go. It is warm enough this week that our frogs are now making a lot of noise. A lot of noise. It's like a froggy brothel out here. Get on with your bad selves. I did initially use regular thread for this, but then it all just started falling apart. So eventually I did switch to embroidery thread because it was thicker and more sturdy and was a little bit easier to tie off. And let me tell you, this took so long that I think it might have actually took over my entire personality. And if I wasn't doing this, I really didn't know who I was. One of the things I'm really grateful about for this project, because it's an older costume, there are a lot of people who have already made this and have documented their quest. That being said, I'm going to move on to the overskirt. Pretty scary and internally makes me want to go... There is this website that I mentioned earlier. This lovely human has already made a beautiful replica of this gown. She has a picture where she laid out the overskirt provided measurements. Just jotted that down. My brain only works if I take something and then draw it myself. And so then I go off of my more poorly drawn version. Listen. I'm not trying to fight how my brain works. Once I converted those all to inches and not centimeters, I think I have a pretty good plan. I have the two fabrics and they don't exactly match, but I'm hoping it'll all come together in the end. Crinkle cut fabric, the pearl fabric that you saw earlier, essentially vomiting glitter everywhere. We send good vibes. Maybe tacos too, that would be nice. Let's talk over skirt. <sighs> It tested my patience and it tested my will to throw it out the window like a skit in all that. I started off with the sheer fabric that I had purchased originally, cut out all of those pieces, cut out all of the pieces from that pearl fabric, along with a demonstration of my massive brain. Who can say whether? That was so stupid. Tape this? I don't know. A little jaded from that traumatic experience, I ended up ordering another fabric that was a bit more gold. And once again, I decided that I hated it and it was trash. So yet another few days went by and I finally got 
the current fabric that I'm using. So if you compare it to the original and then the gold, and even the pearl fabric, it just makes a whole lot more sense. And so for the literal fourth time, I did that process all over again. It's really not often that I'm a perfectionist when it comes to projects, but I am so glad that I made this choice. I think it looks so much better. Another thing that made me want to hurl an apple at humperdink ass looking prints, the sleeves from hell. So it turns out the pattern was totally different from the Ever After dress for this part and the gauntlets are actually see-through in her dress and not made of actual fabric. So I started out by cutting this sort of invisible inner layer and then making those gauntlets out of the sheer netting fabric. I then completely cow pooped my way through the poofs on the sleeve. I kind of just gathered them until I thought it looked okay and then I used only the top portion of the sleeve that came with the pattern. But these were two totally different fabrics and I thought they were close enough until I got them on the sleeve and on the dress form and it was pretty dang noticeable that they were different colors. But I think once I put the trim and everything on it, you won't be able to tell. Yes, hello. Let's talk progress. And also, let's talk about how this project is kicking my arse. No one's fault but my own, but still. <laughs> The whole dress itself is really, really hard to match colors and fabrics. From what I'm gathering, it's very much like a champagne, silver, creams, off-whites. I was sort of heading towards the sunshiny, golden afternoon vibe, and that's not, it's not the vibe! Today, my friends, we are doing the freaking sleeves. Sort through all my trim and figure out what goes where, and then get an idea of what this is gonna look like. Deal? What this means, laying out the sleeve fabric all together, the shapes, the gauntlets, the poofs, attaching all the poofs to the inner invisible sleeve, and then figuring out all the trim for the gauntlets, sewing all the trim on there, and then attaching that to the sleeve as well. And in my head, that's, that's what makes sense. My best bet here is just to throw myself headfirst into it. So let's do it. Please go well. <laughs> While admittedly a lot of this project did make me feel like Charlie Brown after completely whiffing it, I really, really enjoyed this part. Part of my favorite thing about making my dream dresses and cosplay in general is the replication aspect of it, so I had a ton of fun looking at the reference images and then just figuring out what I could do with my own trim. Even if that meant fudging the colors a little bit with paint. <laughs> Now that the gauntlets are all embellished, let's circle back to the overskirt. It is filled with embroidery, very intricate design. Now, because ain't nobody got the time for that, I opted for puffy paint instead of embroidery. Following the design of that embroidery from the movie, I sketched out where I wanted all of my puffy paint to go. I then started applying my silver metallic puffy paint to look like thread. The actual dress has little pearls at the end of this embroidery, but I wasn't gonna do that, so I kind of just globbed on the puffy paint as thick as I could. Now granted, this did not take one-tenth as long as it would have taken me to embroider this. It still took a while because I did have to wait at least 24 hours between every panel for it to dry before I could move on to the next one. The bottom of Danielle's underskirt has this padded hem, so what I did was took some quilt batting, created another strip of fabric that I then folded backwards, sewed that, and then started marking off where I wanted the French knots to go. I only did this in the front and not the section that would be hidden by the underskirt because uh, I am me, and in general if no one's going to see it then I, I usually don't put forth the extra effort. <laughs> Are you ready to finish this dress? The amount of adrenaline I am feeling right now. <laughs> I leave for England, I kid you not, in two days. 
Because so much of this dress has been working on things separately, wild and satisfying to see things start to come together. This is like not a feeling that I feel often because usually my projects are not this big. I generally don't work on things this long unless it's a cosplay that I'm working on behind the scenes. It's a weird feeling, but we're on the home stretch and I'm so excited. Put all of the gauntlet stuff on the sleeves. I need to do the trim on the bodice. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna do this yet, but kind of the same thing with the sleeves. I'm just gonna start laying out trim and see what happens. <laughs> Take the overskirt, which is now dry. Ta-da! This has been a labor of love. The initial round of puffy paint, it kind of got a little deflated, disappeared a little bit. Yesterday I did go over almost everything once more, and added a little bit more puffy paint to the pearls. I went in and painted each individual quote unquote pearl with a pearl white paint. I need to take this and add the trim and then start attaching everything and put the waist embellishments on and I think that's it. I'm hopped up. <laughs> Let's freaking do it. To make the chest piece, I made a general shape and like I said, I just kind of futzed around with the trim and tried to make it look a bit more like the reference photo. I then started laying the trim onto the bodice itself, pinning it, and then I did end up hand sewing all of this, so it took quite a while. <laughs> Because patience is a virtue that I personally do not possess, I busted out my handy dandy glue gun to assist with this outer skirt trim. But then I did sew the silver trim on top, so you can't be completely mad at me. Then I draped it on top of the dress and gathered where I needed to gather and then just sewed it directly onto that, not really worrying about the raw edges because, my friends, I was able to hide all of those ugly edges with the trim that goes around the waist. With a few more final adjustments like hooks and eyes and zippers, it was ready to go. Now that the dress is complete, it is time to head to England. <sighs> Let's go. Time. What went well, what didn't go well. To put it simply, I'm so happy. Here she is. She has traveled to England and back. <laughs> Nothing that I can tell has fallen off, so that's good. Some of the puffy paint is a little sticky and sticking to each other, but you know, other than that, <sighs> I'm so happy and I love it. <laughs> I mentioned this earlier, but usually, and I think a lot of you can attest to this, I don't spend this much time on a sewing project. This project means a lot to me. <laughs> in all honesty, it is the most care that I've put into a project in a really long time. So I have a lot of pride with this dress, far better than I thought I was capable of. And so that means a lot to me as someone who is very self-critical and chaotic, but somehow also a perfectionist. So but essentially a walking oxymoron. 
I also have kind of the memories of England embedded into the dress. So now every time I look at it, you know, I have the fond memories of frolicking around the castle with my friends. There are quite a few things that are different from the movie version, of course. Essentially no way that I was going to make this exact because I didn't have the exact fabrics. The experience of a seamstress works on professional costumes. You know, as a lowly cosplayer, I think I did a pretty good job. I didn't end up putting the long train that she has in the movie. I could lie and say that it's because I wanted more mobility and a train would trip me. And while uh, that is also true, it's also because I ran out of the outer skirt fabric. So I could not make a train that long. It all works out because if I'm gonna wear this to a run fair or a convention, I really can't have a long train that people are gonna be stepping over and tripping over, myself included in that list. I think some of the colors are a little bit different. My outer skirt is a little bit warmer than hers. A lot of the fabrics are just different colors than the one that Danielle wears in the movie, but that's totally okay. Without putting in extensive hunting for fabrics that are exact, I don't think there was a way that I could really match those perfectly. Totally happy with what I came out with. It seemed to really all come together in the last day of this project and I'm so grateful for that. I am in a little bit of disbelief that I actually made this and a lot of it was just laying shit on top of each other. So I'm grateful that it's done, but also I've been working on this so much longer than anything else. So I kind of feel like it's, it's, it's who I am now. And now I'm a little lost now that it's done. What do I do with these hands if not to make ever after dress? But existential crisis aside, I'm so happy it's done. And I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just happy. I hope that you enjoyed watching this process. It's a lot of different moving parts, so I hope that it all made sense. I'm gonna take a well-deserved nap, try to get my body back on schedule and not on England time. Just a reminder, if you would like to see the England vlog and some behind the scenes of shooting this dress, I will have an England vlog up on the Patreon for the fellowship members of that. Ah, you look so good! Turn around so we can see Does them. you look like a star? Woo! Cry. <laughs> <laughs> That's five dollars a month. All the info is in the description if you want to check that out. But if not, totally fine. No pressure. That is it. I love you. Whether you're new or old to this channel, if you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload every other Friday and we have fun here. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. No pockets. Oh, actually. <laughs> Oh, I got so much shite in here. Honestly, it's got to be one of. I don't know how people deal with long hair. It gets everywhere. Your hair is everywhere. I really fucking hate this. Do, 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 do. You know, people rag on me for being a floor troll and say that it's not, you know, the proper way to sew. How else are you supposed to do this? I need, I need to. <laughs> Meh. Nobody got time for that. See, I, uh, <laughs> Drew Barrymore, transform. <laughs>